Scanning models for 3D printing has been around for a long time, but it just got a lot easier with Bamboo Studios AI Scanner. Here I've got a model and we're gonna talk about how we can scan this, bring it to life and get it ready for printing in today's video. Jumping right in, I am in Maker's Lab and we're gonna scroll down until we can find our AI scanner. Now this is an experimental tool and it definitely has some glitches and sometimes it struggles a little bit. I found that, hopefully I can give you some tips and tricks on doing your videos, but with this tool, it is going to require you to upload a video where you go around an object three times. And so over here on the right, you'll see the video that I'm uploading. And in this video, I go around the object three times at various heights. And so the first pass I am above the image, or the first pass I'm above the object in the second pass, I am somewhat level with the object in the third pass, I should be a little bit below the object. And a couple of things is lighting is everything. The more lighting you have, the better detail you're going to get on your models. So we're gonna go ahead and upload this video into the AI scanner. Once the video is been imported, I'm gonna go ahead and use a general mode. This is acceptable for all objects. If I'm doing a person though, I will choose a portrait mode. And there's also this shooting guide here that explains everything that I just talked about um, for using the AI scanner. Okay, with this video uploaded, I'm gonna go ahead and use general mode and say next step. And what I'm gonna to need to do is make a mask of this object and tell the scanner what to focus on. After a couple minutes, it's finally finished with our object. And as you can see, it selected the chair along with the actual object that I'm doing here. So I need to add a mask. And so I'm gonna select add mask. And I should be able to, at this point, select what the target object is for the AI scanner. As you can see, it is a little glitchy, but I'm gonna choose this part. And I'm also going to choose these right here. And there is no real great way to zoom in on this that I've found. Um, so you just kind of have to look it over and make sure that it looks like everything is correct. Now, I have found the fewer times that I click, the better the results are that I get. So if you can get one click and get the entire object, great. If it takes two, that's okay. Any more than two clicks and I find that we run into issues. So the next step in the process is just to generate the model. And this can take anywhere from five minutes up to a couple hours, depending on the amount of traffic or the amount of people that are in line or in the queue. All right, we just got dropped into the queue. Looks like we've got about four hours. And you'll notice up here, it says, feel free to leave this page and come back. I've done this many times. Sometimes it does take the full time. Most of the time it only takes a fraction before you actually get in and your, your project's done. So we're gonna let this run and we'll come back when our object's finished. Now that our scan has come through, we're gonna inspect it, make sure it looks good. And we can zoom in a little bit, look over the object, see if it came through. Um, this one looks like it did a pretty good job. And keep in mind, this is still a new tool. It's only gonna get better. And hopefully as uh, you use it, you'll understand different angles and making sure that you're getting the photos and the videos at the right angle. Okay, so the next step is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get this ready to print. So. We've approved of this model. If it doesn't work, go ahead, give it a thumbs down. It only helps them as they're trying to make this better. So the first thing we, first options we can do are to open it in studio or download as an STL. I always recommend downloading the STL first so that you have that. And so while that's downloading in the background, we're gonna actually jump over and we're gonna just open it in studio. So this way I make sure I have two copies of the model in case if I need a backup. Okay, um, right now we are uh, looking at our, our print and it is absolutely enormous. <clears throat> so I gotta scale this down. So I'm gonna scale this down and I know that the size that I wanna print this out is about four inches. So 
instead of playing around with percentages, I'm just going to come over to the Y and say 100 millimeters, which is just about four inches tall. And now that that has, and now that's come through, we'll just recenter this and we've got our object on the plate. Now, by default, mine's coming in for uh, X1 carbon and I'm actually printing on a P1S. So I'm gonna switch this over to a P1S and I have my object on the plate. Now, if you notice, it's not, uh, because of the nature of this object, it doesn't have a flat side. It, uh, it isn't touching the build plate. And so I'm gonna very quickly, um, we'll try an auto and see what it does, see if I like that. The auto looks like this. I really don't like that. So we're gonna switch this and do a, a manual. We're gonna select the face and I think this one looks the flattest for what I'm looking for. And we'll go with that. Now I am going to rotate this because my camera is sitting right here and I do wanna print it the other direction. So we'll rotate this around. Um, back just a little bit. All right, somewhere in there. And we'll set it there. So now I've got this set on the build plate. Uh, I need to go through and check my settings. So first off, I am gonna be printing this in at G. So we're gonna go down to my customs and then choose my generic. And it is coming in at a super fine extra fine um, print quality. I'm gonna change this to a more standard. Um, maybe we'll go to a uh, high quality 16 and just kind of start there. So what I need to look at is we need to turn on supports um, and I probably need to bump these supports up a little bit just cause I have this flat spot up here I'm a little worried about. I'm gonna go to 35. I know that's not recommended but I am going for something that is high detail with this print, like I stated earlier. And the next thing I'm gonna look at is the strength. I'm gonna increase these walls by one. The top shell, I'm gonna actually turn these down and turn our bottom shell up one. So we're at five and five. And standard quality, I shouldn't need to mess around with this. Um, shouldn't really need to mess around with any of these other settings. Looks like this should be pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and slice this plate. All right, let's take a look at this. So we're looking at a total print time of five hours, um, material cost of 92 cents. That's not bad for something like this. Um, as I mentioned before, this is gonna be a gift for a friend. And I just really quickly wanna look over the layers, uh, especially as we get down uh, towards the eyes, just to make sure that these look good. Um, somewhere uh, right in here. So these are all looking pretty good as we come through here and it looks like this should be great. Okay, now we've got this ready to uh, send off to the printer. And so I'm gonna just go ahead and say print plate and choose my AMS slot and we are gonna send that off. Okay, while that's sending over to the printer, just wanna talk about a couple last things here is this tool is awesome for scanning object. As I showed you, it is a little bit temperamental in making sure that you get the object and you do need to make sure that you have the right lighting on the object. As always, drop a question down below if you have any. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you found this helpful and we will see you next time.